Delighted to be here with filmmaker Sean O'Connor. Thanks for joining us today. My pleasure. I always think it's really funny when I know the person and we still have to do that very professional, formal sounding thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, so tell us, right, uh, I want to talk to you about a white horse, but I'm wary of spoilers about it for people who have yet to see it in festivals or online. Mm -hmm. So how would you describe the film without obviously leaning into the spoiler aspects of it? Uh, so it's set in Ireland in the late 1970s and um, it basically tells the story of a young girl who walks into a phone booth and she's confused and discombobulated but she has enough wherewithal to ring home. She's also wearing a hospital gown so you know that something's up and when she rings home the parents are waiting for the phone call and it becomes evident throughout the course of the phone call why she is in the predicament that she's in and it's hopefully not what people would expect um hopefully it kind of uh yeah retains some kind of mystery throughout well, um suitably tantalizing there <laughs> um tell us actually because I, I really enjoyed the film but the production design as well is is immaculate mm. um was that did you find that a challenge to i create? did well you well, didn't well, i had a great production designer though <laughs> <laughs> she, she did but she did an amazing job it's uh kate howard uh, and uh, my first time working with her, I got, uh, got in contact with her through a recommendation from a friend, but I knew, I'd knew i known her through kind of social circles anyway. And we just said, look, we don't have much money to make this happen, but it's set in Ireland in the late 70s, and there's three different locations that you have to make work, and they have to, they have to work, visually has to work. And uh, she uh, knocked it out of the park on all the possible levels, and then subsequently won a Conceal Shark Award which is, um, uh, yeah, kind of very well thought of in the industry. Yeah, speaking yeah. of industry, it's also been accepted into the Virgin Media Dublin International Film Festival. Yeah. And you was, you've also been uh, nominated for a Discovery Award as well. So tell Indeed. us about that. That's a, a, a great honour. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's, it's brilliant. Um, the, the list of people who are on it is really, really impressive. It's really good. Um, yeah, uh, it's, I think it's my third time having somebody screen at the Dublin Film Festival, um, but it's great. Like it's it's you know really well run and um, it's a uh, it's a really good industry festival as well. Like you know you meet kind of like Galway, like you just meet a lot of really good people there. It's great for networking. Um, but the nomination was a surprise, and uh, it's um, it's pretty pretty flipping great. Yeah, and, yeah. and Paul Cattle was the screenwriter for it. And what's funny is that obviously the. The era is very thematically imp important, but I also think just the novelty of seeing a phone box is it, just sort of so odd now mm. in today's world. And it's like the story would have been over very quickly if there was a mobile phone involved. So I just like, I like the sort of throwback aspects to it as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's so many kind of like, I guess they're like visual limitations in like having a phone call, but then you just kind of work with it, like, you know, and fortunately we had um, an absolutely amazing DOP, Jas Foley, who I had, again, first time working with him, and uh, <laughs> he also knocked it out of the park. Um, and, uh, which, yeah, finding the phone box, we had to, we shot that section down in Tim League, um, because it needed to be the right kind for, obviously, late 1970s Ireland, but then we had to, then the, uh, the, phone the phone that was in it, was the wrong type of phone. It was actually too old. It was like a Mr. Burns kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, we, uh, the Timberley Tidy Towns, who were extremely gracious and helpful throughout, gave us access to it, and they said we could take down the phone that's there. Uh, we put in a um, a phone, uh, correct looking phone for the era, which after searching far and wide, could we see we couldn't get the right one to hang up on the wall. There's ones that are kind of like the city downy on table ones, but we need yeah. one to go up on the wall. So uh, I eventually just bought a replica off eBay oh, for wow. not that much money, gave it to Kate, and Kate uh, aged it, and just uh, she added all the graffiti and stuff in the background. Um, it, it is funny because someone would have come up to you afterwards, you'd use the wrong phone and been like, that's an anachronism. Someone would have pointed it out. Oh, totally. Yeah. Or like, so it, I mean, technically speaking, there's, um, they're called, I think they're called AB phones. And there's a, there's a box at the bottom that uh, you put the change into, which operates. But like because of the way it, we shot it in in such a way that like it ne you wouldn't really notice unless you were looking for it. So you just see the the phone unit itself and not the box below. But even at that, 
people have said to me like you know ah, it's not quite right yeah. <laughs> I, when I played a film and it was like we, we, we doubled up we used the line for Bantry and people were <laughs> oh I'm my like, god I, know, I get it man, I get it asking um, for trouble yeah <laughs> but, um, just, like, just to go back to another kind of period piece that you made um, a few years ago the very enjoyable Ishka Baha mm-hmm. extremely successful congratulations um, Rain Dance and everything yeah. but um, you seem to yeah you seem to like do, do you are you interested in stories from the past? Um, is that something that sort of calls out to you in particular? Or is it just whatever comes along, if it suits you at the time? But are the things you look for in a project? Yeah. Um, not, I, the, uh, the, the period piece thing doesn't particularly interest me. Because um, uh, even, even Mary, another film of yours, feels yeah. like a throwback. It kind of has a sort of an old-fashioned Irish vibe as well. So. Yeah, yeah, int- yeah. I remember talking to, to Jonathan Hughes, who wrote Mary, and... Uh, about that and um, the like the idea being that like it could it do, it's not time specific yeah but it could be could be like the it could be the 70s it could be the 80s like you know um, it's I, almost like Twin Peaks where it's like it's yeah, yeah, any time yeah, right? yeah 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 um, and because there's no there are no like you know, m- mobile phones and stuff in it like, yeah. you know, but that just kind of adds to the adds to the um, the kind of thing of like being out in like rural Ireland and yeah. you know yeah, it's that, that it felt right for, 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 for that story. But yeah, no, the period piece thing doesn't particularly wouldn't draw me to something. Is but if it works to have it in that time and space, yeah, then yeah, I, I feel absolutely. Like, I feel like there's like a nice old fashioned quality though to the work, and that even Pat has that sort of timeless quality that yeah, you talked about as well. Um, God. Oh, are we discovering something here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess I found my calling. <laughs> but actually, how do you, do you um, what, like what would your collaborations be with like screenwriters? Are you are you hands on with the shaping of the script, or do they come to you with things, or does it vary from project to project? But do you ever get involved with the writing, or are you strictly it, a conduit for the writer? It varies, but uh, the best collaborations I've had have been um, when the, I mean, like the, when the script, like I've been very lucky to work with like brilliant script writers, like, but um, the best collaborations are when like, you get a script and you, and I read it and I. Um, I see how I want it to look and then there might be like small changes here and there just like maybe a line of dialogue that would kind of um, if like you took it away you could put in a, a specific shot that would make it more cinematic and um, I, lo- I like kind of arguing for things with a writer but then if a writer can argue back and say well here's the reason it has to stay in yeah. then um, that's absolutely fine too but I think there's um, it's lovely to kind of to build on a script and improve upon it whether it be through adding to it or whittling it down, and when that process is done through the director and the writer, it's um, it's always beneficial. Like for if a, a director should never like read the script and go, "Ah, oh, yeah, perfect." Yeah, got it. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it's like, always it's always like a process of discovery of, of changing the script a little bit, tweaking it here. Totally, and there. totally. Yeah, yeah. It's put put push, push and pull as well. Like you know, like sometimes a writer will just say, "No, no, we're we're, we're, we're you know." Do not want to change that. Like, but yeah. if it's ar- if it's ar- if you can argue it, great. But if I, but if I want to make a change, I have to be able. I but you know, but for my own good as well as the that of the the production and the writer. Like, I need to be able to understand and argue it. Like, you know, so it's a good thing. And also, like, obviously, you've made short films, um, but you've also done stuff for like TV as well. Like, you've had sketches in public telly. You, um, you've done stuff like for Storyland as mm-hmm. well. And how how does that change when you know it's like? short films end up in film festivals but when you're working for something in TV does that change your approach to it are you aware of the medium that will be coming out in or do you think about that sort of stuff not really um, I guess with the stuff, stuff that's done on TV there's just there tends to be another there's another layer of kind of signing off on something you know yeah. because the there's yeah obviously more voices also. yeah 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 I mean if someone's going to bro- broadcast something they, they'll probably have um, uh, some um a take on it like or some changes they might, they might, might want to make whereas with um, but even that that kind of goes with, for funding as well most of the time like the funder will want to see a cut of the film like you know but um, that's kind of it really I mean but I think the core the core, your core job as a director and if you're doing editing or whatever as well like you know it stays fundamentally the same that is to like tell the best story possible as efficiently as possible within the budget yeah yeah and then how do you feel actually about the, the film scene in Cork and in Ireland? Are you, do you think it's in a particularly healthy kind of place? Because you, you always seem to be, you're always working. There always seems to be the next thing. I mean, do you think that's, like, are you happy with the current scene and, and, there, and the things that are there for people, funding opportunities and, and the like? 
I mean, yeah, like it's. And it's a big question. <laughs> yeah, no, it's okay. I mean, the, I, like, I'm not always working. Like, I mean, but like, I am always working on something in the f for the future. Like, I'm always like, like you know, um, submitting applications. Like, and yeah. going to f like, like going to film festivals, networking. Like, you know, and it's all kind of part of the. God forgive me for saying this, but hustle. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it is like you know. Um, I mean, I am at this ten years as well. Like you know, yeah, and, I've, and I've, yeah, yeah. I find the snoozing aspect the toughest. Like, really? I, I wish I could just be do my work, send it out there. But yeah, I find the hustle at film festivals. That's the tough part. I think. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a, it's essential. I do. I yeah. I remember being kind of a little bit uncomfortable at the start as well. But I think once you kind of just get a, into a thing of like everyone's there for the same reason, like, and everyone kind of and also just it's an opportunity to. Like I mean, there's nothing like kind of going to see like or seeing a short film that like blows you away, and then you go and have a point with, with the, the people who made it. Yeah. And you just kind of like put the information in my brain, like you know. Yeah, it's, yeah. yeah, and it's lovely. And people are very receptive to it, and, it's and stuff like at, like a um like at Fastnet or whatever. I mean, you could like bump into anywhere in Galway or Dublin, you know. Yeah, yeah. Like having chats with like Benny Abrams and like just because he's there, like you know, yeah, and yeah. he's. And, you, and people are always willing to like give their advice and help out and totally it's a, it is a very very supportive industry like it, it, it genuinely is um it's also very a very small industry in ireland yeah. so everybody knows everybody most of the time yeah <laughs> um but that's a really good thing you know it's um i think you can uh you know if you keep consistently making good work and you are just you know, like kind of good and kind of careful with people and with your work and with other people's work, it's, um, you will eventually, I guess, make some sort of name for yourself as someone who can be trusted, like, you know. Yeah. But it's the same thing with getting funding, like, I mean, but funding for the most part, I think, is just, um, the f is that the, f the people giving you the money know that you can be trusted with it, like, yeah. that you're not going to come back with, like, sorry, lost the film, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, can I have some more cash? Uh, was it the trillion dollar bill? What for the dollar bill? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Like, and actually, do you find though, um, have you ever had to fundamentally change something to suit a funding thing, or is it more of a kind of a give and take that, or would you feel like, I mean, not really, um. But I think that's something I, I learned from like doing like um, like multimedia and, and CIT back in the day was like the brief is the brief is the brief like you know you, it's the same thing like you know I mean you you get funding through a script and a pitch and a lookbook and a presentation yeah. and then like if you get it you you're you know you deliver you're, that you're not going to go ha like halfway through I'll actually make it a sci-fi <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll just set it in the year twenty eight forty like it's got like you have to see it through and that's. Oh, yeah. But that's good. It's a good white, a white it's unicorn. You know, <laughs> like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but it's, uh, but that's good. It's good discipline too. Like you know. Yeah. Um, so I think with, with funders, like generally, if they sign off on something, that's what they want to see. That's what they want to present it at the end of the day. Like yeah. so, um, it's your job to make it as good as possible in the interim. And then moving forward, um, what's happening with White Horse? Obviously, doing very well in festivals, and um, are you working anything at, at the moment? Um, so we have been, so we actually made the short film as a proof of concept for a TV show. Oh. Um, so it, and a whole, um, like narrative that occurs in that world with um, Bridget, the, the character being like the main protagonist for it. So, um, that is, so we have like, you know, a, a whole like, presentation pitch like created for us that we've been talking to different companies about. And it's going great, and it's also um, it's also fantastic that the, the film is doing so well, kind of parallel to that, you know, um, because it won at it won at the Foil Film Festival, so it's on the long list for an Oscar nomination for next year, um, so which gives us a year to get it in front of as many Academy voters as possible, but that's great. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's the main thing that's happening is promoting the short film to get into to you know get into a good American and European premiere now, and in the meantime, uh, to keep developing the TV show based on uh, yeah. based on White Horse, 
Um, but it's in it's in. I'm 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 working on it with uh, Paul Callow, the writer, who is uh, brilliant. Yeah, as I said, like without spoiling it, it's definitely thematically quite potent. You could do well, you could expand on it quite a bit, considering what you're talking about within the short. Like, yeah, it definitely has legs. Like yeah, 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 yeah. It's so. I mean, there's so much. Um, there's so much to be said, kind of thematically in in that, and also like the world the world of that, like of kind of a like a psychiatric hospital in Ireland in the in the seventies um, is it's not a world I think has been explored very much yeah. um, dramatically, but um, uh, it's uh, you know there's a yeah there's a there's a, there's, a, a, there's so much we can I, do I would say think. unfortunately there were attitudes at the time that make for good conflict even though they're terrible attitudes yeah it's yeah, yeah but it's it is fascinating though there's like I mean what was happening at the time was. Uh, it's almost like retrospectively it's was, it was like the epicenter for like what would happen socially decades later in Ireland with like the uh, you know the um, with gay marriage and um, you know, and yeah re- and repeal movements and all that but that like the very beginnings of that were, were happening in like the mid to late 70s but just they were, they were just like tiny kind of ripples that were ha- but they were happening in places like that in psychiatric institutes where people start to push back against like the, the, um, the oppressive the, nature of everything. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and also how that's linked back then into you know like it's like se- centuries of like, and it's not like and it's it, like the the story is not like kind of you know religion bashing like or it's you know it's it's not kind of very black black and white, but it is saying like that the, the there are these certain stories that are that were very much the kind of the um, these tiny kind of like um, like. Um, opening, opening movements yeah. in what would eventually become like this this tidal wave that would happen like twenty or thirty years later, forty years later, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So there's definitely lots to explore there. There's lots to explore. Yeah, yeah, and it's um, and we've we've put together a um, uh, what I think is a very very strong story, and um, yeah, you know the the uh, as I was saying earlier about you know working with writer, and um, creating something as um as thematically interesting and you know visually cinematic as possible but that's what we've been doing with the TV show yeah. with the development of it well, we look forward to it thanks William for joining us pleasure thank, thank you, you.